Welcome to video 22 in series 3 and in this video I'll show you how to implement AI that detects the player and then chases them. Okay, so in the previous video I had set up an evil cube that has a nav mesh agent but it doesn't chase the player. So what I'm going to do is to add a script to the uh, AI that first of all casts an overlap sphere to detect the player. It'll check for the player's layer. And if it detects the player, then it'll set a destination for this nav mesh agent. And by so doing, it will chase after the player. So I'll need a new script first of all. And I'll call that, uh, say, enemy uh, chase. Probably detect and chase. But anyway, I'll open it up. And then, as usual, I'll do my stuff. OK. And of course, namespace, very important, chapter one. OK. And I'm going to need quite a few variables. Uh, first, a couple for uh, more efficiency. So private transform, my transform, private nav mesh agent, my nav mesh agent, and then uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to cast the overlap sphere at the intervals. Uh, but first of all, I need private collider and array for what the overlap sphere will detect. Um, hit colliders. I'll call that just like before. And then a private float check rate. I'll set this in another function. Oops. Private float next check. And then. I will also have a public, maybe I'll just put this to the top, public layer mask, uh, player layer. I could have called it maybe detection layer is more appropriate. In fact, I think I think I do think that is more appropriate. Detection layer and uh, another one private float uh, detection radius. So how far is the uh, AI's detection? How far can it detect? All right, so then void set initial references. I haven't spelled that correctly. It's better, I think. Anyway, keep going. And then my transform is equal to transform. My nav mesh agent is get component nav mesh agent. All right. Uh, and then the check rate, I'm going to set it as check rate because see, uh, if I have many AIs all in the scene and they were all spawned at the same time, if they all had, say, for example, a check rate of one second, then every second all of them will perform the same overlap sphere check, which can be a bit expensive. Uh, so I don't want that to happen. So what I'll do is I'll just put a random range of like 0.8 to 1.2 seconds. And so some AI, each of the AIs will have a slightly different check time. So by doing that, the load is distributed over a portion of time and there won't be a, like a sudden performance spike every one second. All right, so check rate is equal to random dot range, not random range, pick range because random range is obsolete or going to be and 0.8F to 1.2F. Okay, right. Next, I'll do a, um, a check if player in range. Maybe I'll make another function like that. Check if player in range. OK. And first of all, my check if time dot time is greater than uh, next check. Then in that case, uh, next check uh, is equal to time dot time plus check rate. No, nothing new here. Um, not only that, I also have to do another check. I have to make sure the nav mesh agent is in fact enabled. And my nav mesh agent dot enabled is true. Don't forget the double equal sign. One equal is assignment, two is comparing. All right, uh, so then with that uh, done, uh, I need to cast an overlap sphere. So I'll say uh, hit colliders um, is uh, physics dot overlap sphere and then where's the position my transform to position so starting from the enemy's position what's the radius detection radius okay uh, the layer is going to be the detection layer and 
Ah, uh, that's it. Okay. Alright, so then I do another check. If hit colliders dot length is greater than zero, so if there's actually something in there, then that means we've got our player. We've detected the player. Uh, so in that case, then, we give our AI a destination. So we say my nav mesh agent. So my nav mesh agent dot set destination. Uh, where should that be? Oh, well, it should be what was detected. So the hit colliders, uh, the first entry in it, which is the player, which has been detected because there's only one player in the scene. And so, of course, only one item will be in that array. And so I know it's the player dot uh, say transform dot position. All right. And is there anything else? Any other parameters? I can't think of any just off the top of my head. Okay, so now I need to actually um, use them. So set initial references here and start and update is check if player in range. Okay, so I've got my functions all set up. My script looks like it's working. I need to attach it and set the detection layer. So let's go and do that. Uh, ooh, I forgot to do something. Uh, that's a very good warning message. I put in there detection radius and never set what that was. So let me do that. I'll say 50 units. That was helpful. All right, coming back here, uh, I'll now go ahead and put in here enemy chase. And I'll set the layer to player. All right. And actually, for example, I'll set it to 10 at the moment. Just so that you can see that, in fact, the enemy can lose the player and then it won't do anything. Uh, so if I hit play now, let's see what happens. Does anything happen? Yes, it is doing something. What exactly did happen? Okay. So, so long as I stay within its range, the enemy continues to find me. That's right. Now, if I run away more than 10 meters, it'll go to the last known position, and there it stops. It doesn't know where the player is anymore, and it stops pursuing. But if I get closer, there you go. It knows where the player is and chases the player. Now, if I fire away, bang, the AI is finished and they're done for and well they don't pursue the player anymore so that actually worked nice and now if i set it to something more sensible like 50 uh, the ai will be able to find the player very easily and it'll continue to chase after the player uh, whenever i'm further away than the stopping distance and within uh, the detection range of 50 units so it'll keep chasing after the player as you can see that happening right now, it's quite slow. Uh, so that's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. And as you can see, that worked. Did you see how the AI smashed through the wall? That's why I attached the collider. It just, uh, just makes it a little bit more interesting. All right, so that's successfully working. And I'm quite happy with that. Let me blow that AI up the evil cube. And okay, we're done here. I think the next thing I need to show you is how to spawn a bunch of them at the same time to make things a bit more interesting. All right, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.